Thank you very much. My name is Don Daniel, and I'm the author of The Pill Method to Accelerate You to Financial Freedom. Today, we're going to go over prepayment of principal, isolation of principal amounts, leverage, and liquidity. Once you understand these four banking principles, then you will understand the rules of how interest is charged and how you can save 50 to 75% of all the interest that you will ever pay. So the debt won't be eating, eating, ever eating. So now she's laughing over here because she knows I'm just, I'm getting ready to recap what happened. How would you like to be able to do that? Pretty good use of their money? How about that? Folks, how powerful is that? Okay, they don't even say powerful anymore. All I can say is, ooh. <laughs> Today, we are going to learn how a mortgage works. I'm going to give you some of the background. We're going to teach you four banking principles. Now, when I first heard about this, I, I first, when I first heard about this, we had a 30-year mortgage, did an analysis. It's a five-page report that I got for free. Actually, you'll be able to get the same report for free if, if you so choose. Five-page report telling me that I was going to pay off my original home in Michigan in seven years. I said, how is that possible? I said, through a process called interest cancellation, if you're taking notes. Interest cancellation. So now, once I learned that, I found, also found out that um, so I, do I have to refinance? No, you don't have to refinance. Well, is it one of those bi-monthly things? No, your payment doesn't change. Well, I know a bi-monthly payment doesn't change, you just cut it in half. No, you pay once a month. In fact, I was on a bi-weekly payment program. I was going to save seven years on my mortgage. And in fact, there was a lot of money and interest being saved. I was going to save seven years on a bi-weekly program. How many know what that is, a bi-monthly a bi program? So it, it does work. Saving seven years will save me a lot of interest, and I pay off my mortgage in 23 years instead of 30. But when he told me I was going to pay off my mortgage in seven, saving 23, saving thousands of dollars in interest, obviously it got my, 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 my attention. So I said, well, well, am I throwing extra money at principal? It says your monthly budget likely will not change. And then I, I, I had to know how it worked. Folks, I was on the program eight months before I started figuring it out. <laughs> eight months. And then I saw that there was an opportunity here to share it with other people. So as a firefighter, I started the business. I got trained on how to offer this to individuals, churches, and businesses. Once I did that, I also learned that um, by, by doing this, people wanted to know how it worked. And I'm telling you, uh, I, I'm going to tell you just a short story here. Uh, I, was, I was attempting to, uh, can you hold that for me? Thank you so much. I was attempting to uh, talk to a real estate company in Michigan about this so they can offer it to their clients. Well, what they brought in, um, it was right across the street from Andrews University. Right across the street. So they brought in the new vice president of finance to the meeting, <laughs> okay? Um, they also brought in a retired general conference lawyer and accountant <laughs> to the meeting. They also brought in um, the, the, the president of the university's son is actually a financial planner, brought him to the meeting. And I'm fairly new in all of this, and I'm supposed to talk to them. Folks, when I got through with the program, I could not answer their questions. They ate my lunch. But the way God intervened and handled the whole situation, because some of them got kind of agitated, um, but uh, the way God intervened, 
the, the, the company st started with the program anyhow. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I was surprised, I was shocked. But with God, anything is possible. So I was determined that that would not happen again. I was going to find a way to answer those questions, to be able to show people how this worked in a way so that people could understand it. And that's how, over the last three years, that is how the pill method for accelerated um, financial freedom was developed. The pill method. And if you see up on the screen, pill stands for prepayment of principal, isolation of principal amounts, leverage, and liquidity. If you understand those four banking principles, you're going to take home in your notes today enough information to start saving interest tomorrow. That's how powerful these four banking principles are. So I, I, I found out that through this, we, when we moved to Huntsville, um, I, fast forwarding now, uh, my wife got a, a job to, to, she got a call to come to Oakwood University. The business that I was started part-time started to do very well. And then we decided that maybe we ought to let firefighting go. So I resigned from firefighting after 17 years. I worked up to be a, a lieutenant. Re after resigning, then I was a whole year on my own working from home. After that year is when my wife got the call to come to Oakwood. If I hadn't started this business, then I would have had seven years to go to retirement. My wife would have been at Oakwood. I would have been in Michigan. Not good. God worked it out. I was able to move. The business went with me. And uh, things have been working out just fine. And now I'm here in South Florida be, uh, starting to share this information with you. Is that okay? All right. First of all, we're going to take a look at prepayment of principal. So on the screen, we are going to see a mortgage now for $200,000 at 6%. $200,000 at 6%. All right, do you see that? All right, don't, don't scroll down yet. $200,000 at 6%. The, um, interest, uh, the, the, the interest is 6 and the payment amount is $1,199.10. Can everybody see that? $200,000, 6% of the payment is $1,199.10. Now, I have, I have since learned to talk to people about interest. What most people focus on is the interest rate and the payment. And they want to know if they've got a good interest rate. How most people know they have a good interest rate is talk to family and friends and say, well, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? And if, it's, and if we're in that ballpark, we think we've got a good interest rate, right? So I'm saying, no, I, I'm thinking you're paying more like 100% interest. He says, no, I'm paying 6%. I said, well, does it pass the duck test? I said, well, what's the duck test? Well, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, what, it's most likely a what? A duck. So what we're going to do is scroll down just a little bit here and highlight um, how much, keep going, we're going to scroll, keep right there, all right? Um, right so we're going to highlight that in, total interest paid, total interest paid, one line up. Right there, $231,676. That's just the interest on a $200,000 loan at 6%. Folks, that is 115.838% of what you borrowed. That is over 100% interest, isn't it? So is it quacking like a duck? It most certainly is. So it says 6%, but it turns out if you make every payment on time, like you were supposed to, not being late once, we're going to pay back $231,676 on that loan for a total of $431,676 for the entire loan. You paid for the house twice. 
And folks, we, we ran out of the office, clicked our heels. We've got our house. <laughs> going to pay for it twice, but we got our house. So what we're going to take a look at is what we can do about that. All right? So now let's scroll down and see what the payment is. Now, first of all, we're going to take a look at payment number one, and we're going to pretend that payment number one is January. All right? So out of the $1,199.10, right? The payment breakdown on payment number one is $199.10 goes to principal. $1,000 goes to interest. So the real payment is $199.10. The $1,000 fees for the privilege of giving the bank $199.10. Okay? Now, how much of that $1,000 goes to help you? None. It goes to build another bank. That's why the bank is the largest building downtown. All right, so now, what we're going to take a look at here is how a mortgage works and why is it so expensive. So now we're going to put up on the screen, um, uh, back to introduction, and do you see that formula there? That is the formula for compound interest. Albert Einstein himself called that the eighth wonder of the world. Compound interest working for you is awesome. Working against you is devastating. All right? So that's what happens. We put your $200,000 in that formula and the interest rate, and then it gives us the payment on the very first line of your mortgage statement. 360 payments, 30 years. So $199.10. Now what we'll do is, what, what happens is that $199.10 is subtracted from your $200,000 and you get the month-end balance, the month-end principal balance, okay? Now, $199,800.90. All right, now once you see that, then the computer sees your month-end balance, puts that into the... Uh, formula and that number there controls the payment configuration on the very next line. You see that? And it gets better as it goes down. Do you see that? Now $200 goes to principal and only $999 goes to fees. You don't seem to be excited. All right, so now what we're going to take a look at is now the $200 is subtracted from the $199,800, and now we have a hundred and, do you have a, a mouse over there, Jason, to use? All right. So $199,600.80. Now, that number controls the payment configuration on which line? On the third line. Oh, now you got it. You're getting it. You're getting it. All right. So, yeah, so that's how it works. So now we're going to take a look at a prepayment of principal and how that works, okay? Because everybody knows you can put extra principal on. But I'm going to show you why it works. Now, if we make our mortgage payment on time in January, do we owe the bank any more money in January? No. What is the principal payment for February? $200.10. Is there any rule that says we have to wait to January to give the bank an extra $200.10? No. Let's take a look at um, prepayment of principal there, down at the bottom. It says something like this in your mortgage. We have the right to make payments of principal at any time before they're due. You're aware of this, correct? A payment of principal only is known as a prepayment. Um, we, if we make a prepayment, all we have to do is let the note holder know in writing that we're doing so, or you can just add it to that other line on your statement that says, how much money do you want to add to principal? All right? Now, most people will look at that and say, oh, I can put extra money on principal, but how does that really help me? In fact, if I have an extra $1,000 
and I owe the bank $200,000, right? And I put that $1,000 on principal, how much do I owe now? $199,000, does that make you feel any better? No, I can do something, I can buy a big screen TV now with that $1,000. So why would I put $1,000 on a mortgage and still owe $199,000? I'm going to tell you why right now. So now, we make our regular mortgage payment. Let's pretend we're going to take that $200.10 and apply it to principal right now. If we take that $200.10 and send it to the bank, will the bank subtract any interest from that money if we do it in January? No, because they already have their interest for January. $1,000 is more than enough. All right? So if we take that, then we will subtract it from our 199.8, and we're paid down to right here in January, aren't we? Is that right? So now, if we take that number and say so that number there um, controls the payment configuration on which line now? The third line. So that is the next full payment in February. The one from March moves up one, doesn't it? How about that? What just happened? For $200.10, you just eliminated one month from your mortgage schedule. And what happened to that $999? You never have to pay it, ever. You just skipped over that. Now. If you don't, we, we're going to be building on this, so if you don't get that, we can't get it till we move on, till, we can't move on till we get this. Does everybody understand that? How prepayment of principal works. All right? So now, all the principal payments and all of the interest payments are linked together on your mortgage schedule. If you prepay one, then you don't have to pay the interest on that very same line. What happens if you prepay five? Then you do not have to pay the interest on five lines, and you've just eliminated five months from your mortgage. Is that correct? Is it getting more exciting now? Yes. Folks, how powerful is that? All right, do you want to see something even more powerful? So you know how prepayment of principal works. Now we're going to take a look at, let's click on introduction again. Now we're going to take a look at the next letter, which is I, which is isolation of principal amounts. Isolation of principal amounts. Let's go back to the mortgage. Now, if we make our mortgage payment every month, just like the bank wants us to, for a year, what's happening? We're giving our payment of about $200 every month. Is that correct? Let's scroll down for one year. All right? We're giving the bank... Every, every month, $200 in payments and about $900 in fees every month. Is that correct? At the third, uh, the third column there is cumulative principal. That's, if we add up the first column, then that, that's what it adds up in the third column. That's our cumulative principal. Do you get that? Are you with me? Now, in the fourth column is our cumulative interest. It adds up all the interest in the second column. So, if we know if we, by the end of the year we will have paid our mortgage down by a whopping $2,456 and a penny, is that correct? How much is the bank charging us to give them $2,456 and a penny, folks? $11,933.19. Folks, how fair is that? How legal is it? Oh, she said, oh, it's legal. All right. So there has to be a cheaper way to give the bank $2,456 and a penny. Is that right? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to imagine, we're just understanding the math now of how a mortgage works. This is not my program, but I'm just understanding the math first. Is that okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is take a look at this $2,456 and a penny. We're going to highlight it. All right? Now, if we know we're going to pay that, if we know we're going to pay that in one year, the question I have to ask you is, do we have to give it to the bank in 12 monthly installments? If we had it 
in the first month we could give it to the bank, couldn't we? Yeah. All right. Jason, will you bring up a, a little calculator there? And uh, we're going to do uh, some calculations on the screen. Uh, uh, the numbers won't be real clear, but we're going to put in $200,000. All right, and we're going to subtract from that two hundred thousand, two thousand four hundred and fifty-six dollars and a penny. How about that? Subtract. It comes to a hundred ninety-seven thousand five hundred and forty-three dollars and ninety-nine cents. Folks, isn't that the same number that's right there on line twelve? So if we gave that to the bank in the first month, we'd be paid down to right there in one month, wouldn't we? Our next full payment for February then which would be on which line? 13? Wow! So folks, what happened to all the interest payments between line 2 and line 12? How powerful is that? Folks, you just knocked off 11 months worth of mortgage payments and saved how much money? $11,933.19 in interest, right? Minus the $1,000 you paid in the first month. That's still over $10,000 in interest saved. And 11 months knocked off your mortgage payments in one month. Sound good? How powerful is that? Would you like to hear something even more powerful? All right. So now I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to use Jason over here. Jason, Jason, now um, let's highlight that $2,456 in a penny. I, uh, how much is the bank paying you in interest on your savings account, Jason? Oh, listen, less than 1%. Is that what it is, folks? Oh, listen, listen, less than 1%. So, Jason, I want to borrow from you. $2,456 and a penny, and I want to borrow it for one year, but I'm going to pay you 10% interest for it. You, what, what do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely? Okay. So why wouldn't he? All right. So now, when I get the $2,456 and a penny, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to what? I'm going to put it on mortgage principal, she says? Okay, so I'm going to make my regular mortgage payment, number one, and then I'm going to put the rest of that money on principal, aren't I? I'm going to pay my mortgage all the way down to the principal balance on line 12, right there, with using whose money? Using other, other, other people's money, she said, OPM. Oh, listen, we got a finance student in the house. Okay, using Jason's money, I'm going to pay it down to right there. My next mortgage payment for February is going to still be on what line? Line 13. I'm still going to save $11,933.19, aren't I? Minus $1,000. So I'm going to pay, save over $10,000 in interest still, right? How about that? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Now, here's the question. I still have to pay Jason back his money in a year, don't I? When I pay him back, and there's a reason why I choose 10% interest, because you thought that was high. But the reason why I, I chose 10% interest is because we have tithe payers in the room, all of us. <laughs> okay, let's highlight that $2,456 in a penny, Jason. What is 10% of that number, folks? $245, which means I have paid this mortgage down to, let's highlight the whole thing, Jason. I paid my mortgage down to right there for $245 interest instead of $11,000 interest, haven't I? Folks, did you get it? Yes. How powerful is that? Powerful. Is that powerful? Yes. Would you like to see something even more powerful? Uh, he says impossible. <laughs> he says, listen, that's impossible. Listen, what we're going to show you is something called, now we've gone over three of the principles. Prepayment of principal, isolation of principal amounts, and now we're getting ready to do principle number three, which is leverage. She says, is this legal? Okay? It's legal because, let's bring up the borrower's right to prepay. It's in your contract. So here's the, qu here's, here's, here's the question. Here's the question. 
When you signed your mortgage, is there anything in there that says, the only money you can give me is money from your job? It doesn't say that. Does the mortgage company care where you get the money from? As long as you give them the money, according to the rules, they have to accept it. So what's really happening is you're renting their money. Anybody ever hear rent, rent a car? So when you're through with the car, you take it back, the rental stops, doesn't it? As soon as you give the bank back their money, the rental stops. Make sense? Okay. How legal is that? We are very legal here. Very good question. Very good question. So we're going to introduce a couple, John and Rebecca Jones. This is their mortgage. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about John and Rebecca Jones. John and Rebecca Jones, they're not very rich. They're only making about $5,000 a month. But they have $4,000 in bills. Okay? So John and Rebecca Jones, $5,000 coming in, $4,000 in bills. John makes $1,300 twice a month. That's his net take home. His wife, $1,200 twice a month, take home. $5,000 total, correct? Now, I'm going to introduce uh, what's called a line of credit. All right? A line of credit. Uh, it could be an equity line of credit. It could be a personal line of credit. It could be a business line of credit. It c we can even, I can even show you how to use credit cards, even if they're maxed out. We're going to show you all of that, okay? So now, what we're doing here is using the idea of leveraging someone else's money, but you do not have to. I want to make that perfectly clear. If you want to, you can use your own money. All right? You do not have to use borrowed money. All right? Is that clear? But borrowed money is so much cheaper than using mine. I love using other people's money. Uh, you're going to find out why. But please, don't let that... Don't let that discombobulate you. If you want to use your own, it's perfectly fine. The program will do it. So what we're going to do is take a look at John and Rebecca Jones. They like to do benchmarks and reward themselves for good behavior. So they're saying to themselves, we're going to pay our mortgage down by $10,000. When we get down to $10,000, we're going to have a little party. We're going to invite Mount Pisgah Church to the, <laughs> to the party. All right? So 45 months later, that's three years, nine months later, they finally hit that $10,000 mark, and now the party's on. But I want you to notice in column one and in column two, they're still giving the bank $200 payments every month, while the bank is still receiving $900 payments in fees. Three years, nine months later. Okay? Every month, making that mortgage payment. So they're having the party, and Jason, the mortgage professional, shows up and says, you're having a party? Why are you having a party? It's because we paid our mortgage down by $10,000. So he says, how much in interest did you pay to get it there? How much interest is that? 43939 dollars 97 in three years, nine months. Folks, added to the principal, that's over $54,000 paid out for a $10,000 benefit. How much do they feel like celebrating now? Because of Jason, you just got kicked out of their party because they don't feel like celebrating now. So you can thank Jason for that. All right, so now, I, I, I've got a little question for you. Anybody here into cars or... Uh, classic cars, anything like that, all right? You appreciate a good car? Well, listen, I've got a classic car that's worth every bit of $10,000. Can I get somebody here to pay me $43,000 for it? Any, 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 any takers? No, why not? No value. Listen, folks, we do it in our mortgages all the time. Isn't about time we stop. All right? So now, $43,000. What I'm going to show you is how we're going to pay this mortgage down by the same $10,000 for less than $5,000 interest instead of $43,000 interest. Would you like to know how? 
And if I show you how, will you promise never to pay this kind of interest to the bank again? All right. She said, I, she said she promises. I promise. All right. So now what we're going to do is take a look at this. So we're going to round that $10,019 off. We're going to round it off to $10,000. All right. And we're going to introduce this line of credit. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about a line of credit. A line of credit, you get a checkbook with it. You can write checks from your line of credit. And in most banks, you can, you can actually go online and do online banking from your line of credit. It's called a revolving line of credit. So if you have a credit card, a credit card is a revolving line of credit. If you have a credit card and you owe $500 on that credit card, right? And you pay it off one day, can you now use that same $500 the next day? That's a revolving line. We borrow, we pay it back, and we can borrow it again without filling out a new contract. Is that correct? So we understand how a line of credit works, a revolving line. All right, great. So now, John and Rebecca Jones have this line of credit. They go to their line of credit, which is what? $60,000. They have a $60,000 line. All right? And we're going to double the interest rate on that line because you can get it around 4%, but we're going to call it 8.6% interest. 8.6% interest. And now they're going to take that $10,000 from the line of credit. And what are they going to do with the $10,000 from the line of credit? They're going to apply it to principal. If they do it in month one, they're paid all the way down to line 45 in one month, aren't they? How about that? All the way down to line 45 in one month. Look at that. So if we take a look at that, and if they're paid all the way down to there, their next payment in February is on which line? 46, you mean they made payment number one and their payment in February is on line 46? Have mercy by putting that $10,000 on? Using whose $10,000? Somebody else's $10,000. <laughs> All right, using the line of credit. So we put that on there. And now if we look at how much, what happened to all the interest payments between line two and line 44. What now? They're gone? Between, all of those interest payments between line 2 and line 44 gone? You don't have to pay them. Ever? How about that? Folks, that's $42,988.83 on line 44. Is that how much interest was saved? Minus the $1,000 you paid in month one. Is that correct? Now, is that a good outcome? We just sh also shaved off three years, seven months from the mortgage. Three years, seven months gone, $42,000 saved. Good result in one month? I like that. Now, they took $10,000 from the line of credit and put it on there, so they owe the bank $10,000 over here. So now, I need you to wrap your mind around this thing because there's something that goes on in the back of our minds that says you never rob Peter to pay Paul. Don't rob Peter. It's going off in your mind, isn't it? Okay. Now, you already know about what I'm talking about because you've done it before, and I'm going to give you an example, okay? So here's the example, two credit cards. One is a MasterCard. The other one is a Visa. On your MasterCard, you have a $10,000 balance. The interest rate is 10%, correct? Now you've got, you received a brand new Visa card in the mail on Friday. Brand new, permanent 2% interest rate. What are you gonna do? Transfer the balance? You know, you know transfer the balance, don't you? Okay, transfer the balance is code for borrow money from Visa to pay off MasterCard. Isn't that borrowing from, to, does it make sense though? Why does it make sense? 
because it's lower interest. If I'm going to pay back the $10,000, I might as well do it at as opposed to 10%. Exactly. Does it make good business sense? Yeah. Folks, here's my other question. Have you increased the amount of your debt by doing that? No. no. Same debt? I just moved it from here to here. All right? Pay 2% interest. Now, last question. If I make the same payment that I was making to MasterCard, I make that same payment to Visa, do I pay the loan off faster or in the same amount of time? Why? Because of the lower interest rate. So that lower interest rate on my bill is a smaller piece of the payment. So more of my same payment goes to principal instead of to interest. How about that? So it's beginning to make sense on how I could pay off a mortgage in eight years instead of, because more of my money goes to principal instead of to out of the same payment. Beginning to make sense? Folks, it's, just, it's not magic, it's just math, isn't it? All right, so now, John and Rebecca Jones take that $10,000 from the line, they paid down their mortgage by $10,000 and created another loan by $10,000, have they increased the amount of their debt? Same debt? So now they must pay back the $10,000, right? Because you don't get out of paying the $10,000. You still have to pay the $10,000. So what they have chosen is that if I pay it to my mortgage company, the mortgage company wants, if I pay it their way, they want $43,000 in interest to do it their way. So if I get the money from somewhere else, all I have to do to pay an interest is something less than $43,000, and I have a deal, don't I? Let's take a look and see. So they take that $10,000, they put it on there, they knock three years, seven months off their mortgage, they save over $40,000 in interest, they do it all in one month. Now we're going to see how much it costs them to do it, okay? So... We're going to take that $10,000, we have it in a line of credit, we're going to bring up a new calculator, we're going to have two calculators up, we're going to take $10,000, or put it on there, that's how much they borrowed at 8.6% interest. Now, when John and Rebecca Jones get paid, their money generally goes to a, when they get paid, they get a direct deposit and their money generally goes to what? A checking account. Is that where your money goes? Yeah. Goes into a checking account. Well, John said, well, how much is the bank paying me on my checking account? Zero. Zero point one. Some people are getting actually zero. So, sister, you, listen, you, you need to smile because they're not getting what you're getting. <laughs> okay? You, there, a lot of people in here get nothing on their checking account. All right? So now... What does the bank do with all that money sitting in checking accounts? They invest it? Is that legal? Well, how about that? What is the average credit card interest rate? I'll take what you tell me. Average credit card rate. Somebody, anybody. 12%? Okay, we'll take 12. All right? Let's say they're lending that money out at 12%, which is not unheard of, correct? And let's say the bank is extremely generous and paying you a full 1% for your money. Someone just made 11%, haven't they? Who was it? The bank. And how much of the bank's money did they risk in earning that 11%? What? Folks, that's called leverage. That's called banking. What we're going to learn here today is how you can leverage the bank's money get great benefit for it, right? And then pay them a small fee for the use of it. Is that okay? What's good for the goose? Listen, you know that one, don't you? <laughs> all right, so we got the $10,000 up there. And now, all right, now, here's the thing. John and Rebecca Jones get paid, and they need to have a place to park their money, a convenient place to, so they can pay their bills. Is that correct? All right, so now, they put it in a checking account, and they say, oh, that benefits the? Now, let's fo folks, I want you to know this. I'm not anti-bank. <laughs> Love the bank. I don't have an extra $300,000 to pay for a house. They have it. 
They're willing to let me use it. But I don't want to pay them all the rent they want to charge for the money. Is that fair? Okay. So we're not anti-bank. We just want to be good stewards of our money so the debt won't be eating, eating, ever eating. Correct? Okay. So now, they, they, John and Rebecca Jones take their 13, John gets paid one week $1,300. Instead of putting it in his checking account, he's thinking. I just need to put it in a place where I have access to it 24 hours a day, seven days a week to pay bills, right? If he put that on his line of credit, does he still have access to it? So he puts it on his line of credit, which is a loan, correct? It's not a checking account. It's not a savings account. It's a loan. He puts $1,300 on that. Uh, and then he looks at it as a deposit, doesn't he? Because he needs his money to pay bills. But the bank gave him a receipt for $1,300 what? Payment. Wow. And if he does that, doesn't he lower the balance on that line of credit? Isn't he paying less interest on that line of credit? Now, he was, he was fully, fully prepared to pay the bank the full whatever they were going to ask on that $10,000 because he used it to save $40,000 on his interest, correct? And cut three years, seven months off. But now he's going to pay even less interest by using his income and placing it on the line of credit. And every day it's in there, he's not paying interest on that full $10,000, right? How about that? Now, the line of credit interest is different from your mortgage interest. Line of credit interest is calculated on the average daily balance. The average daily balance. Your mortgage is calculated on the month end balance. Correct? So as soon as you give that line of credit money, you start paying less interest immediately. How about that? So now, he's, he's got $1,300 sitting on his line of credit. He's reduced his balance by $1,300, and his wife gets paid the next week. What does she do? She puts her $1,200 on there, too. She looks at it as a, but the bank gives her a receipt for a, come on now. How simple is that? By the, time that, by the end of the month, they have put their full $5,000 on that line of credit, haven't they? And when they put that on there, their, their average daily balance is around what figure? $5,000? You mean they borrow 10000 but they're going to pay interest on what? 5000 How would you like to be able to do that? And what was the interest rate? 8.6? So what we're going to figure out now is what, did, what is their monthly fee or their monthly rent on that money, okay? So we're going to take that $5,000, we're going to multiply it by 8.6, uh, I'm sorry, 8.6% 8, 8 interest, 430, and now we're going to divide that by 12 to get the monthly interest fee, which is $35.83. Write it down. $35.83. Now she's laughing over here because she knows I'm just, I'm getting ready to recap what happened? John and Rebecca Jones took $10,000 of the bank's money, put it on their mortgage, saved over $42,000 in interest. Once they've done that, they've also cut three years, seven months off their payments. And they did it all in one month, using someone else's money for the whopping total fee of $35.83. Pretty good use of their money? How about that? Folks, how powerful is that? Okay, they don't even say powerful anymore. All they can say is, ooh. <laughs> All right, $35.83. Now, the bank has to get its $35.83 because you did use their money. We want our $35.83. Does John and Rebecca Jones have to send the bank a check for $35.83? Why not? Because they've given them $5,000 in payments already? Do you know they'll never make a scheduled payment to this loan? Why? Because every time they get paid, they're putting money in, and they get a receipt for a payment. So now, that $35.83 could be considered increasing their budget if they had to send it in. 
but they don't, do they? They'll just, the bank just adds it to the balance of the loan. So they're paying this loan off faster without increasing their monthly budget. How about that? Okay, now, all right, so now, 35.83 in that first month. Now, they think, they're thinking now, thinking people, love John and Rebecca Jones, they're thinking, well, the bank just charged us 35.83 this month. Can the bank charge us another 35.83 in the same month? Well, they know that. So they take $4,000 out of the $5,000 they put in and pay their bills with it. <laughs> because the bank has already charged them. Is that correct? How about that? So they take $4,000 out, pay their bills with it, and then, they, then with, if they do that, their balance goes, bring up the other calculator, please. Okay. So they have $5,000. We'll put $5,000 on the board, and we're, and we're going to add to it, add to it, add to it $4,000, because they took $4,000 out of the line of credit to pay bills with. Their balance is going to be $9,000 at the end of the month. Is that correct? They started out at $10,000, but now it's only nine. Why is that? Because they put in five, but they only spent four. So that $1,000 stayed in the line of credit, didn't it? How about that? Now, that $1,000 used to go in a savings account making them how much money? <laughs> One point something. All right? If that. So by leaving it in the line of credit, is help, that $1,000 now is helping to pay down their mortgage and save them 6% on their mortgage. Which is better? making 1% with it or saving 6% with that $1,000. And if they need their $1,000, folks, where is it? Do they still have access to it? How about that? So every day it stays in there, it's saving them money, isn't it? They weren't using it anyway. How about that? So now, we're coming home now, we're home in the home stretch. I'm wondering if anybody's figuring this thing out already. So. If they put in $5,000 every month and spend four, which means they're using that thing for, they're using that line of credit as their loan, right? They're also using that line of credit as their checking account, right? Now they're using the line of credit also as their savings account. Folks, that's what we call a money merge account. We're merging accounts. Money merge account or MMA money merge account write that down so once we do that oh boy it starts to get exciting now so they're putting in five and spending four which means the real balance is coming down by a thousand dollars every month is that correct folks at that rate how long will it take them to pay back ten thousand dollars less than a year how many months ten months all right so now it'll take them ten months and their interest fee for the first month, bring up the other calculator, was $35.83, correct? So every month, but the balances, they have a declining balance every month, don't they? Hmm, declining balance. So they're not going to pay $35.83 the next month. They're going to pay something less. But we're not going to do all that math today. We're just going to round it off. We just call it $35 a month interest, okay? Oh, uh, uh, for 10 months, even though we know they're not going to pay that much. But $35 a month for 10 months is how much money? I'm sorry? $350? Folks, we're getting ready to take it home now. All right? Fasten your seat belts. John and Rebecca Jones took $10,000 of the bank's money, put it on their mortgage, saved $43,000 in interest that they'll never have to pay. Once they've done that, they've also eliminated three years, seven months from their mortgage. They did it all in one month for the grand total in interest of $350 instead of $43,000. I think somebody ought to get an amen or a hand clap or something. <laughs> Folks, did we tell you the truth today? 
All right. How powerful is that? Okay, because I told you we can do it for something less than five thousand dollars, right? Three less than three hundred and fifty is way better than less than five. You were settled for five thousand, wouldn't you? Not me. <laughs> I'm going to do it for something less than that, even. Listen, folks. So now we've gone over prepayment of principal. You understand that, right? Isolation of principal amounts. You understand that? Leverage. And now we have one last one. What is it? Liquidity. John and Rebecca Jones are paying all of their bills out of that line of credit, aren't they? All of their bills out of that line of credit. The money from their paychecks goes back into the line of credit. Wait a minute. They take money from the line of credit, pay bills. Are their bills paid? They take the money that would normally pay the bills and put it back into the line of credit. Are their bills paid? Where is their money they normally pay the bills with? Do they still have access to it? Yeah. Folks, liquidity means the ability to access your cash on demand. Isn't it still there? How powerful is that? So now we're paying off. The, reason, the number one reason why we don't pay off loans faster is that we have to figure out how much extra money we can afford to put on debt. Because we have, to re we have to have some cash for emergencies. Now we can pay off debt at record rates without ever being cash poor. Oh yeah, that gets a, that gets a hand clap, sister. <laughs> That's prepayment of principal, isolation of principal amounts, leverage, and liquidity. Folks, that is the pill method. That is something God gave to me because I wanted to have a better way to explain how a mortgage worked to people, all right? So now, we're, we're taking a look at this thing. Have we mentioned anything at all you couldn't do on your own? If you really tried, you could do this on your own, couldn't you? Even using your own money, you could just get up a uh, schedule out, see how many of these we could prepay, and you'll know exactly how much interest you're gonna save, is that correct? Now, let's enter into it, because we could do that on our own, let me add in a couple of other things. Is that okay? What if we think about, what if we think about the fact that there's compounded interest daily going on? Let's say that we have our bills always fluctuate. It's going to be hot. So now our, 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 our cooling bill is getting ready to go up. Air conditioning is going to be running all the time. Is that correct? So now there's going to be changes there. Um, if we do use somebody else's money, how much do we move and on what day do we move it to optimize the use of the money? Now, it, it, wouldn't it be important to get the, the, the best use of your money? Because listen, I, I, I know none of you do it here, but in Huntsville, we'll, we'll look down the street and, and if the gas is two cents cheaper three blocks down, <laughs> We want to optimize our money, don't we? So we're going to go three blocks down. It's two cents cheaper. Okay? Because we're looking. Do you think that somebody somewhere could have come up with a software program, a computer program, that can take all of these, these four principles and some of the things that I've talked about to optimize your money so that you could be out of debt the fastest way possible for the least amount of interest possible? You think it's possible? Well, it is. Thank you for watching this presentation. You now have enough information on prepayment of principal, isolation of principal amounts, leverage, and liquidity. If you would like additional information on how this can be placed into a software program to save you the most amount of money possible in the least amount of time possible, get with the representative that brought you this presentation to watch. Thank you so very much.